How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge Bob Thousand and today we're gonna forecast the 2022 hurricane season. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. So let's begin by taking a look at the sea surf temperatures in the Nino 3.4 region over the past several months. This is the region synonymous with determining what type of enzo phase we're going to experience such as an El Nino and a La Nina and that plays a major role in terms of of how active this the uh, Atlantic hurricane season will be and even the eastern hurricane um pacific hurricane season will be and as you can see over the past several months sea surface temperature has been well cool uh, much cooler than average for the most part in the nino 3.4 region pretty much extending from july of 2021 all the way th up until now and you see that the sea surf temperatures are now right around one degree celsius below average which means that we are under the threshold right now of a la nina since the threshold is at um requires the sea surf temperatures to be at least um a half of a degree celsius below average and right now we've been under that threshold for quite some time now i'd say since around the october to september time frame so we are in a pretty strong la nina at this time and you see that um, based on how the trend's been going over the past some months we do see that the sea surface temperatures have been rising a little bit um, right around February we do at, however do see the sea surface temperatures lowering again however as for the forecast when it comes to sea surface temperatures the um, the CPC still forecasts that we're eventually going to enter an uh, Enzo neutral pattern right around, I'd say, May to June, where we do see that more likely than not during the months of May, June, July, where we're going to experience an Enzo neutral pattern. And for August and September, while the, the chance of an Enzo neutral pattern is still the highest, it isn't really more likely than not since there's a pretty high chance as well of a La Nina phase developing right around August and September and even uh, uh, El Nino phase while the chance is small there is a little bit of a higher chance by the time we reach a September and August time frame so um, based on this forecast we could assume that we're, we'll most likely be in a neutral pattern for most of the summer which was similar to um which was similar to 2021 because if we take a look at the sea surf temperatures in the nino 3.4 region for 2021 you see that for majority of the hurricane season from july all the way up until i'd say october you see sea surface temperatures while they were below average they weren't necessarily un below average enough to where we could determine it as being in a la nina threshold so it seems like it's going to be a fairly similar hurricane season as 2021 which would mean that it would be more active than usual based on that fact but we also need to take a look at other factors because of um and also there is still a pretty um relatively high chance of a la nina occurring so we could still see a la nina despite the chance being lower than a neutral phase and even if we do experience a neutral phase you see that the fact that the la nina um pattern um phase is still a, at a relatively high percentage that means that we're more likely than not going to experience sort of a weak neutral phase more leaning towards a la nina phase than let's say an el nino phase so i'd expect la nina type conditions as a result so take a look at what typically happens during a la nina phase uh, for in the for the atlantic hurricane season you see that the air is a lot more stable, cooler, and drier than average as a result of cooler than average sea surface temperatures along the equatorial Pacific. And what that allows is that it pretty much allows an area where the uh, the um, air pressure aloft could sink in this region, which allows for a lot more lift in right around the Atlantic for more convection and as a result more tropical cyclones to develop in the Atlantic and since it's so stable and dry in this region there's going to be less convection overall throughout the Pacific that could potentially hinder or bring stronger wind shear to the Atlantic so as a result during a La Nina we typically see a lot more tropical cyclones but the opposite happens during an El Nino where we do see 
uh, more moist and warmer and um, a lot more lift right around the equator Pacific while there's a lot more sinking air and a lot more stronger vertical wind shear in the Atlantic during an El Nino which limits tropical cyclone development right now it seems like we're more likely going to experience sort of a La Nina influence this hurricane season. So I do expect more tropical cyclones as a result throughout the Atlantic. But that's not the only factor we're going to need to take a look at. We're also going to need to take a look at the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, which is sort of a pattern or of natural variability, which occurs between a period between 60 to 80 years and what the oscillation pretty much represents is the overall sea surface temperatures anomalies throughout the northern atlantic during a positive atlantic multi-decadal oscillation we're more likely than not going to experience much warmer than average sea surface temperatures while during a negative um atlantic multi-decadal oscillation we typically see mostly cooler than average sea surface temperatures throughout the northern atlantic and not not only that we also see less vertical wind shear during uh positive atlantic multi-decadal oscillation we see the trade winds and the surface winds off the western african coasts weaker so as a result we typically do see a lot more tropical cyclones during a positive atlantic multi-decadal oscillation and this isn't an oscillation that varies between year and year this simply takes a long um this oscillation pretty much takes a very long time to necessarily phase to phase change if we were to take a look at the uh, atlantic multi-decadal oscillation over the past several pretty much over the past 100 plus years you see that we've been in a positive atlantic multi-decadal oscillation Pretty much since the late to mid 1990s so we've been under a uh, strong atlantic multi-decadal oscillation for quite some time now and you see that before that you see the period where the phase was negative was pretty much between right around the mid 1960s all the way up until the mid 1990s so you see that some of that sometimes these um, the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation could last for 30 plus years, which is a pretty long duration. And you see that um, based on what the most recent pattern we've been seeing over the past several years, it does seem like it's going to change anytime soon. We're going to still continue to be in a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. So we should expect warmer than average sea surface temperatures throughout the atlantic this hurricane season which should enhance tropical cyclone activity now when making this forecast it is a you might be thinking that um that every year seems to be above average when it comes to tropical cyclones and um you're right to that on um, that um in that sort of extent because the reason why it's it feels like almost every year we see an above average hurricane season is because of this. We've been in a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation for quite some time now, 20 plus years, over 25 years from now. So, of course, we're more likely than not bound to experience an above average hurricane season when we compare the average to the long term average which is over 100 plus years and i know a lot of you guys probably weren't even living but when um when um the negative atlantic multi-decadal oscillation exists i wasn't um alive during that time so it might not seem so an above average season relatively speaking over 100 years might not seem like an above average season to you but there are other factors that i do believe will make it an overall more active than usual hurricane season when um even when comparing it to let's say the past 25 years where we've been in a positive atlantic um multi-decadal oscillation so as a result of this we're gonna see above average sea surface temperatures if we were to take a look at the difference you see that during a positive phase where we see warmer than average sea surface temperatures and during a negative phase you see that the temp sea surface temperatures are a lot cooler than average so there's definitely a big difference um this definitely plays a role when determining if there's going to be a more active hurricane season or not and pretty much it's inevitable that we're going to see an above average hurricane season as a result of 
um, as a result of the fact that um, when we compare it to the 100 year average, but um, comparing it to the near future, um, we need to take a look at the sea surface temperatures. So take a look at the sea surface temperatures right now, you see that, yeah, for the most, it's early March, of course, a lot of the Atlantic is, is mostly under sea surface temperatures below the 80 degree Fahrenheit threshold. And if you're wondering what is above 80 degrees, it's pretty much in the yellows and higher than that, which pretty much means that if you're in the area above 26 degrees Celsius, then you are experiencing the sea surface temperatures are above 80 degrees. And you see that the only areas experiencing sea surface temperatures above 80 degrees are pretty much the Caribbean and the Southern Caribbean, especially the Gulf of Mexico still doesn't have sea surface temperatures in the 80s as it's going to take quite some time to get there. So as the just off the coast of Florida and for the Northeast, you typically it's typically a little bit more rare to receive sea surface temperatures up to the 80s. But you guys certainly could. Ex um, there are those years where you do experience temperatures in the upper 70s to lower 80s when it comes to sea surface temperatures. So, but that doesn't happen till August and September when the sea surface temperatures that far up north has all the the whole summer to warm up. So it's a little bit later for you guys. You um you get to that temperature, but yeah, you see that um the sea surface temperatures are for the most part um the are um the eight degree temperatures are exclusive to the Caribbean. Now take a look at the sea surface temperature anomaly overall while the most of the Atlantic isn't experiencing temperatures above 80 deg degrees when it comes to the anomalies you see that much of the northern Atlantic is experiencing sea surface temperatures above um, average for this time of the year this includes the Gulf of Mexico and especially I'd say the northern east um, the northwestern portion of the Atlantic you see that Sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average, and this includes the Gulf Stream as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see an influx of subtropical cyclones develop right around the northern Atlantic once again. As over the past several years, I've been noticing that pattern where the northern Atlantic just seems to be much warmer than average almost every year. And um, this could lead to more subtropical cyclones. However, at the same time, I do believe these warmer than average sea surface temperatures this far up north may at the same time hinder maybe tropical cyclone development because if there's so much lift in this area, there there's more likely of a shot that we're going to see more sinking air in the areas where the sea surface temperatures are cooler. And you see that in the main development region, sea surface temperatures aren't necessarily much above average to even below average at times just off the coast. So if this trend continues, that may hinder the hurricane season just a little bit. I don't think it's going to be major though. And I think that could easily be offset by the fact that we could see an influx of tropical cyclones in the North Atlantic, but it's at least something to be aware of. But I'd expect the most tropical cyclones to develop right around the Caribbean and we should see more subtropical cyclones develop further northward as well. I wouldn't be surprised and we could see a trend where uh, uh, more tropical cyclones do move further northward as all of these warmer than average sea surface temperatures um, where we do sometimes see those um, tropical cyclones form just off the northeast coast. We of course saw in 2021 where we saw um, where we saw tropical storm Henri make landfall um, right around New London, Connecticut, where I was um, reporting during that tropical storm, and it developed right around this area, moved to the northeast, and we also saw it with tropical storm Fay, which um, in 2020, which developed just off North Carolina coast and made landfall in New Jersey. We could see tropical cyclones such as that, as it, it's been more of a trend over the past several years, and but I do expect the most tropical cyclone activity to occur right around the eastern Atlantic and not as much for the main development region um, as of right now. But this could easily change within the next couple months. And I'll make sure to update you guys regarding those changes. Now, taking a look at where I expect the most um, tropical cyclone formations, I'm expecting it mostly throughout the Gulf of Mexico. Um, it extends to Florida as well, just off the Carolinas as well, because the sea surface temperatures are are going to be much are currently much warmer than average and i do believe that this will be the area where there's going to be a lot more lift for tropical cyclone development to occur and that 
could allow for a little bit less tropical cyclones in the main Davao region because if there's so much lift in this area, there's more likely going to be sinking air in an area where the sea surface temperatures aren't as warm. So, and that could be right around the main Davao region, but I still do expect an above average tropical cyclone formation as a result of the warmer than average sea surface temperatures. So keep that in mind as well. Um, this could extend for northward as well. Um, so I expect um, U.S. and falls to be more imminent right around this area. This extends to Cuba as well. Um, and maybe the Carib other Caribbean islands such as Jamaica and the uh, Hispaniola area of Dominican Republic and Haiti. You could be in for a more, um, you're, you might be more likely to receive more tropical cyclone um, um, formations right around this area. So make sure to keep that in mind throughout the Caribbean as well as the United States. Now, take a look at my official hurricane season forecast. So, um, so I decided to use the pretty much the modern, um, the modern average. So this extends from 1991 to 2020. I don't want to use a long term average because. That doesn't necessarily represent what what we're gonna experience over um, that what we've been experiencing over the past 30 years, which is a more active than usual hurricane season. And I know a lot of you guys haven't lived before 1991 to really experience how a uh, below average hurricane season was like. So I wanna compare it to years where we've been in, in a positive multi-decadal um, Atlantic oscillation because that gives a better relative forecast when it comes to um, the hurricane season and you see that in my forecast I'm expecting 17 total named storms compared to the modern average of 14 eight hurricanes slightly above the modern average and then four major hurricanes um, just one more than what we typically see during uh, hurricane season over the past um, over the past 30 years I did lower my forecast just by a little bit um, because there might be a higher chance of maybe uh, El Nino. It isn't by much. I still do expect it to be an above average hurricane season, but it's at least something to be aware of when making this forecast. But remember guys, whether this hurricane season is less active, more active, or around average, just remember all it takes is one tropical cyclone to completely change the lives of millions and completely devastate a community so don't underestimate any hurricane or the hurricane season just because it might not be as active as you anticipate because remember all it takes is one hurricane or one tropical cyclone to impact an area to completely change the lives of millions of people so make sure to keep that in mind but i'll keep you guys updated um we're still several months out from the hurricane season so there is still a lot of time to iron out the forecast but i do expect it to be an above average hurricane season at this time but yeah guys i uh, thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather lake content and i hope you guys have a good day